This folks, our guest is uh, Craig Hewlett. Craig, of course, he's a geopolitical analyst, a researcher, and also a consultant to uh, many law enforcement agencies across the country and federal as well. For the break, uh, Craig says it's going to be Hillary and it's going to be uh, the other Bush, Jeb, in, in 2016. So, Craig, tell us why the, you're saying the right wants Hillary to run and, and not saying Elizabeth Warren or somebody else? Well, let me put it this way. I, when I say the right or the I, I never say right or left any longer because th those are irrelevant uh, terminology these days. What we have, that of course, it exists in the public, in the public's mind and in the public discourse. People still believe in left and right. When you talk about the government, there is no left and right. There is no... On the issues that matter, national security, uh, federal agencies, the laws that govern the land, foreign affairs, wars, peace, uh, economics, Wall Street, bailouts, money, on the issues that matter, there is no difference between Republicans and Democrats, not a nickel's worth of difference. They will vote every time, all in the same pattern, all in the same reason, and every once in a while you'll see somebody gets to stand up on the left or the right, and they'll oppose a certain initiative, so it plays to their constituents because they're up for re-election. But they won't vote against it until they know it's already going to pass. In other words, their opposition doesn't matter. Then, And I'm saying this because I worked with a congressman, and I worked with Congress for a number of years. And as a special assistant, I witnessed it take place. People that would have supported an anti-position wouldn't take it until they knew that position would either fail or succeed according to the will of Wall Street. If they knew it would succeed according to the will of Wall Street, then they were free to vote against it for their constituents to believe that they're standing up to Wall Street, but only after they knew it would pass. So in other words, I'm saying we've got a bunch of liars in the House and the Senate and in the White House. That's exactly what I'm saying. Don't call them hypocrites. None of these people are hypocrites. Politics is a last refuge of scoundrels. People that can't make it because they don't have the moral character, the decent character of decent human beings, go into politics. The next place to go is law. That's what politics is. Law making. That's what I was. A law making aid. My job was to report what I felt was going to happen with this particular piece of legislation and why and how it would affect the public, the people of the United States, and then make my recommendation based on my opinion. Now, that didn't mean anything to uh, generally to any congressman that received this paper that I would prepare if the congressman I worked for passed it on. But when I knew that there was a law being prepared that would do great harm to the American people, I said so. And I'm telling you, it's a lot of work. Some of the laws are eight, nine, twelve hundred 1,200 pages thick of legal gobbledygook. But in the end, you can tell what the impact will be. So when you see these congressmen voting, even if they've never read the law, somebody on their staff has. Somebody was there just like me. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, Carl. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not the brainiest guy on the planet. There are hundreds of guys like me and some few women like me that are being hired by Congress, Wall Street, and the corporations. They know what's going on. Trust me. Nobody's in the dark inside the Beltway. What you've got is a bunch of crooks and liars inside the Beltway. They don't give a damn what happens to the American people as long as the new world order that's the new metaphor we must use, their choice of language, not mine. I call it the global regime of economic interdependence. That's what it really is. That's what it should be called, but it's, it's short and quick. It's a new order. Hitler had one. The British had one. They wrote books about it called the New Order, the New Order of the Ages, the New World Order, the New Planetary Order. There's always going to be a new order, and the continuity of government is how you, get, how you get there. You get the continuity of government by not giving the American people a choice in their candidates. You give them one that's a woman, that's a female. It would have been wonderful if Obama had waited and became the candidate on one side against a woman on the other. Then it would have been a real circus. 
But the truth is, they're already picked because Wall Street owns them. All right. Hang on a second, Craig. 800-450-7876. Folks want to speak to you. Let's go to line two. Jay's in D.C. Jay, you on with Craig Hewlett. Yeah, um, like, honestly speaking, do you think our votes really count? Uh, well, they count in the sense that it keeps the idea of democracy alive. But if you're only given the choice between a corrupt, liberal-looking, so-called female and a corrupt, so-called conservative male, one calls themselves a Democrat, one calls themselves a Republican, but they both work for Wall Street and the, and the Pentagon, the only thing your option is is to vote independent and vote for somebody else on the ticket, like the, the Green Party, the Republican, I mean the Libertarian Party, the Socialist Party, which, of course, have no chance of winning whatsoever. In my opinion, this country should have at least five, six, eight different legitimate parties representing large swaths of the American people who believe in what that, that party stands for. And we should have, you know, 13 members in, in the House that are Communist Party. Uh, Cat, you know, in Britain, they have the Catholic Party, the Labor Party. You know, people do get represented in some of these countries, not in America. We're the one free democracy where the vast majority of American people will never have representation. So in that regard, your vote doesn't mean squat. Can I ask you a question, Jay? Yeah, and just one more quick question. Go ahead. So so if you poor, you really don't have a democracy. Like you really just not really consider as just being a person. You just poor and just oh well. No, it's, it's not truly a democracy. It's a plutocracy. It's an oligarchy running a plutocracy. If those words are a little confusing, get a good philosophy dictionary, look them up, and then study, the, study it a little bit. Don't just look for the definition. Go into it a little bit, Google it, find some um, authors that will talk and speak to the issue. We have an oligarchy, a money power that runs this country. It runs every aspect of the Okay. The Democrats and the Republicans might differ on something that I could care less about, for instance, gay marriage. I could care less about gay marriage, and I think most Americans really don't care. It's a ridiculous issue that never should be in front of the Supreme Court. But they occupy the American people with crap like that, so you will not have the issue at hand, the NSA surveillance of the entire American people, as the issue that decides. What are you going to do, Hillary, when you get elected? What are you going to do, Jeb Bush? Because they're not going to do anything to stop it. That's why nothing will change, and the new system, the continuity of government, will continue, and you and I as citizens will continue to get screwed.